Okay guys, this is Delta actually coming at you from after the time that this video has recorded. This will actually be the third time I have now attempted to upload this video. Now the reason for that is that for whatever reason lately my videos have been having this issue where the first frame of the video will continuously display itself throughout the video and it, it well, how should I put it? Well, this video in particular was extremely bad with it. It almost produced this <laughs> uh, like a strobe light effect if you can imagine and it it, it really made it unwatchable. Um, the only solution I have found so far is to upload the video and then just let it sit for like a day because this has been an issue on the past two videos that I have uploaded as well but it seems to sort of resolve itself. Um, so hopefully by the time this video actually does go public it will not be an issue and you guys will not have to deal with that if it seems like it's not gonna resolve itself then I guess I will just put this up anyways but I wanted to give you guys a heads up in case uh, basically in case there's some like flickering in the video I guess that's not anything on my end it uh, it's directly when this gets uploaded to YouTube that this becomes a problem essentially so other than to wait <coughs> on my uploads until this, uh, until this little bug gets fixed, I guess. Uh, it, it's really the only thing I can do. It's the only thing I can think to do anyway. So I am sorry about that. And unfortunately, I know that that means this will have been delayed a day. Uh, maybe there'll be a double upload today. Who knows? But at any rate, uh, let's just get to the video, Jesus I suppose. Christ. Hello, everybody. It is Deltre. We are back. We are finally, and I do mean finally, back with some more Final Fantasy Tactics 1.3. It has been so long. It's been so long, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to get back into this. I really am. It's been <laughs> still one of my favorite games of all time, honestly. And I do believe that we have just completed Act 1 on our previous episode, did we not? Yeah, we took out Algus, that goddamn bastard. I'm so glad we got to do that. That's honestly one of my favorite parts of the game, just because I hate it so much. He's such a prick, man. After all, he shot Tita, right? Isn't that something? And you know what's really great about this? I'm doing another playthrough as well, where we had a character death very recently, and uh, it was terrible. It was probably one of the worst character deaths I've ever seen. Whereas, <laughs> yeah, wow, this really couldn't have worked out any better. Because in this game, we just saw Tita, the sister of our best friend, murdered at the command of our own brother, by one of our former allies, no less. Like, there could not be a bigger contrast between these two scenarios, okay? <laughs> One is just so whatever, and this one literally sets up the rest of the game. If Tita didn't die right then and there, this game would never have happened. That's how important her death is, and that's just... <laughs> Man, it's like I planned it all along or something. But, <laughs> I, I did try to look at comments <laughs> from the last part, as I usually do, because you guys always say really interesting things, and there are people who have not seen this before who might have questions and whatnot. Uh, but this time, I'm going to be honest, I might have missed a comment or two because... <laughs> Oh, God damn, I gotta get back at this guy, man. You can just take a look at the previous video, you'll see what I mean, but... Yep, yep. <laughs> a little bit harder than usual to find what I was looking for, that's for sure. Uh, I did see somebody that was a little bit confused as to what happened with Tita there, though. Um, essentially, everything that Algus had been saying up until this point is, in fact, true. Right, he's... He's a dick, but everything he said is technically correct, right? Nobles don't care about non-nobles in this universe. Which is why Zelbag was more than willing to tell Algus to shoot Tita. I saw there was a little confusion about maybe... Maybe it was planned all along, or if... Or if it just happened in the moment. No, it just happened in the moment because the hostage was Tita. And they, did, they didn't care, because she's a commoner, essentially. So that's kind of what they were getting at with that. And it just, it just, it's really ruthless, actually. But that's honestly one of my favorite things about this game, truthfully. Just the fact that Algus was right all along, despite the fact that he is clearly not supposed to be light. Like, you're clearly not supposed to... How should I put it? Like, he's moderately sympathetic, I suppose, because of his backstory. But you're not supposed to be rooting for the guy, you know what I mean? And despite all that, everything he said was true. So, yes, he's an asshole, but what can you really do? He's, he's not wrong. Everything that he said was correct and it happened as such and I think that that's really cool that's really cool I don't feel like a lot of games would have the balls to make somebody so uh, transparently assholeish completely correct like that but uh, I think we're just gonna jump into act two now something that somebody had brought up was the fact that if I would have had like one or two good users of oh my god my bad <laughs> I, I was saying if I would have had one or two good users of chain landing as somebody brought up I probably wouldn't have had 
to reset on Algus as I did. Uh, I, shoot, I didn't watch the video, but I think that I lost at least one shot uh, to Auto Potion, right? And if I would have had a, what is it, a 7 range instant action magic, uh, I could have easily made up for the difference there. So that would have probably made that whole strategy a lot more reliable. Good eye to the person that pointed that out. I, I would definitely make that adjustment if you were going to try to snipe him yourself. Yeah, we're going to get a bunch of guests here. Gap, Garyon, and uh, Agrias as well. So now we're back to the present, essentially. So, my G, you know who kidnapped her? Maybe. See, that was Delita, obviously. Again, it's been a while, and I know that not everybody has seen this game before. So just to recap, we are now standing outside the Orban Monastery. Uh, this is taking place directly after the very first map in the game. Whereas uh, Act 1 was a flashback sequence, now we are in Act 2, and we are picking up the story from where we left off. Delita has now kidnapped Princess Zobelia. We're not entirely sure why just yet. I'm not entirely sure why. But that's where he's at, and uh, we're going to have to get to the bottom of that sooner or later. He's taking Princess Ovelia with him. Can't be that far. Are you going after him? Of course. I couldn't face the royal family unless I do. We won't help you. It's not in the contract. So, <laughs> it's certainly... Alright, so... <laughs> This playthrough is kind of chipping holes in my reality a little bit because I definitely remember this game being a little bit less Englishy. Uh, just looking at this, it seems a little bit brute force. I won't lie. <laughs> so I guess if that's something that turns you off, maybe get the uh, PSV version. We don't need help from one who's not even a knight. Yeah, see, like who would say that? Who's not even a knight? She should be saying like we don't need help from you. Like I think that would be simple enough. A knight must fix his own mistakes. This is one of our responsibilities as guards. Levy and Alicia, let's go. You know, Levy and Alicia are actually pretty kick-ass in 1.3. For reasons we'll see. Are you alright, my lord? Oh, so the princess, how is she? I assume that's what Simon sounded like. Generic old guy voice, right? I'm very sorry. I swear I'll get her back. No, you'd be in danger. Don't worry, I swear on my knight's honor, I'll save her. I'll go too. I won't be a burden. That's right, my G. Are you crazy? This is none of our business. And Gav Garriott, again, he's just all about the money, man. A mercenary through and through. I have to know. I must see it with my own eyes. It makes sense that my G would be so interested in this, though. Especially seeing Delita like that. You mean that boy you saw? Exactly. Exactly. Ah, oh, you're stubborn as a mule. Don't cry to me for helping something happen. Yeah, right, you're coming anyway. Shut up, Gab Garyon. Seriously, he sets that up as if he's not going to be coming with us, but he's just going to bite the bullet, I guess. For chapter 2, the manipulator and the subservient. All right. So we're going to start the party off again, three scrubs. Well, originally they were three scrubs. Now there's like mm, two decent units and Rad. <laughs> Rad is still not very good in my opinion, but we'll take him anyways. Uh, now, these guys aren't exactly the same as a character like Agrias, although they do always start with these exact stats. Uh, scaled to be of an average party level, I do believe. So, Alicia, you can see her there. They're both knights. They're, I, I think they are... I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I don't want to say anything about that, really. But I, I think they're pretty close to what they were in the prologue, more or less. But what makes them so good in 1.3 is the fact that they now start with... Some advanced classes, which we'll be seeing as soon as this loading screen is over. Dude. Right, so of the two, I think that it was Le'Veon who's better. No, 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 no. I think that Le'Veon was better, though, because she has Mediator. Yeah, she's a level 5 Mediator, which is pretty crazy. Very, very useful. Very, very useful. I think she even starts with really good abilities, too, doesn't she? Uh, Mediator. Yeah, she comes with so many kick-ass skills. So she has Threaten right off the bat, which is probably, like, the bread and butter, I think. I mean, I, I don't know, I, I don't want to say it's the bread and butter necessarily, but it, it's a very good skill. It's it, it's kind of like a starter kit, I guess, for any competent mediator. You would probably want this skill, because Don't Act is pretty powerful if you can land it, and Threaten is fairly accurate, as I recall, uh, at least in terms of 1.3, so there's always that. Uh, she also comes with Preach, which is crazy, because this is the re-raise spell. Basically, a free re-raise spell. No MP necessary. Of course, the accuracy can be a little bit shaky. Uh, had you planned your party around Lavian for whatever reason, <laughs> you could ensure that you have good compatibility with her. So, she would have basically a 66% chance for auto life, I want to say. Roughly, roughly. I'm, 
I'm not, I'm not entirely sure off the top of my head what the hit rates are, but I do know that if you have good compatibility or even best compatibility, you can easily hit that to over 50%, which is very, very good considering how powerful Reray's actually is. So that's one huge thing that Lavian has in her favor. Besides, Mediator's not even a bad class to be in general because the skill set is just so good. So good. All these actions are instant and cost no MP. Instant actions for no MP. With powerful effects on top of that. So yeah, very good. Uh, Mimic Derevon. I can't remember if I've actually covered Mediators or not, but Mimic Derevon is like a... It's really good. It's really good, guys. It's a, it's a plus-shaped area of effect that inflicts sleep. So you can hit potentially up to five enemies with sleep by using this one move. Now that's obviously a best case scenario, but still. Again, it has all the same properties. Instant action, no MP. And area of effect in this case, so that's pretty sweet. <laughs> by, by the way, uh, Derevon is the... He's the tutorial guy. <laughs> so that's why it causes sleep. <laughs> I always love funny little in-jokes like that. Uh, Alicia, Alicia, does she have anything special about her? I just can't remember. Oh, she has a level 5 Oracle by default, so that's... Yeah, she's probably got some good stuff too then. Uh, Spell Absorb, Pray Faith. Ooh, maybe not quite as good. Maybe not quite as good. Faith isn't a bad status by any means. Uh, as somebody was pointing out, Faith and uh, Innocence are both kind of double edged in a sense because, again, with Faith, you get 100% Faith, which is going to jack up your magic damage as well as your magic hit rates, but it's also going to do the same for the enemy when they target you. So if you have really high Faith or the, uh, or the Faith status itself, Enemies are going to be hitting you way harder with magic. They're going to be way more accurate with magic. Conversely, if you have innocence, you can't be hit with your own magic. However, you're totally immune to the enemy's magic as well. So, these two skills can be very good, uh, depending on your strategy. A little bit situational, but if you plan around them, they can be incredibly powerful. Oh, she also has Confused Song, which is nice. Uh, I want to say this is AoE, right? Do do. No, no, it's not. Never mind. Uh, again, the oracles are much more accurate as compared to mediators. Uh, they do have to deal with charge times. Oh my, again? <laughs> okay, sorry. Uh, yeah, uh, oracles do actually care about things like MP and charge time as compared to mediators who can do their status effects instantly. But you're it's basically a difference between reliability and and speed in this case. The Oracle is almost always going to connect with their attack as compared to the Mediator, which is much less likely. Uh, mediators, they, they operate roughly on coin flips, I would say, which is why a skill like Mimic Derevon is really good because you can you can hit like three enemies at 50%, which is obviously better odds than one enemy at 50%. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind. There's situations where you would want to use both, though, I'll say that. Red, on the other hand, I, I feel like he's not in as good of a spot as Lavian and Alicia because he has, he, like, his his class sets are physical. And it's not, it's not necessarily that physical class sets are bad, but it's just that he doesn't bring any utility to your team other than raw damage at this point. Uh, I guess... Well, I guess he starts pretty close to Ninja, doesn't he? Because Thief and Lancer... No, I think Lancer is for Samurai. I, I would have to look that up. I don't have the I don't have exactly everything memorized. I have a general idea. But I know that you need, I think, level 5 Thief and a good level Marksman in order to even have a chance to get Ninja. But I think you also need Monk as well, so he would still have to spend time to unlock that. But still, I guess if he didn't want to train a Thief, he still comes with Steel Heart and Steel Helmet. So he can steal something, and he also has Steel Heart, which is... Again, it's just a really nice skill to have in a Thief's Toolkit. It can easily turn the tide. Uh, Guilt Toss, I guess, gives him a ranged option if you wanted to make him a Thief. He did come with a crossbow, so there's that. Uh, yeah, basically, these guys are just way buffed from what they were in Vanilla, though, because they didn't have anything truly special. I still think they had some advanced classes unlocked, but not like this. Not like this, because now they can actually just become advanced classes and uh, use them instantly. See, I guess Brad would be okay as a Lancer. You can see he already has uh, maximum horizontal distance, and he can jump a height of five. So yeah, yeah, he's he's okay. He's okay, but I definitely think the ladies are in a better spot. We also have these two, Agrias and Gavgarion. They come with some really sweet stuff. I'm probably gonna I'm probably gonna gank that and put it on my good characters. 
Not that, not that they're bad, but they're guests. <laughs> so you can only do so much with that, really. Uh, Gafgarion will never die. In case you forgot, he has that Night Sword ability, which allows him to drain enemies' health as well as deal damage. 100% uh, damage, in fact, so there's no penalty for using that over a regular attack. And Agriath still has her AoE sword stuff. Mostly just status sword at this point, but she has other options as well. No need to talk about those right now. She is not fully playable yet. Okay, we're ready to give this next one a shot. I didn't really do all that much. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, I didn't really do all that much. Uh, I bought Paralyzed for Ragnella, and that is actually it, I think. Uh, oh, yeah, I also took some Agrias's crap and gave it to my G, because he has really good uh, magic stats, even as a squire. Yeah, he's actually my strongest mage, even like this, because in 1.3, all the Mithril gear gives you, at the very least, one point of magic. I think the sword gives two, I do believe. Yeah, the sword gives you two magic. And the rest of it gives you at least one. Also, this diamond armlet gives you both, uh... Yeah, the diamond armlet gives you both one strength and one magic. So, that's really nice for him. He's, he can basically do whatever. I kind of had him this way so that he would survive this first round. Because I do remember this next battle uh, quite well. Because, uh... You start pretty much screwed, in fact. Uh, the enemy has just about every advantage here that you could possibly ask for. Uh, I, I thought about maybe using Lavian because I'm pretty sure she can survive the first round as well. Whereas, Yvonne is straight up going to die. But, we should be able to get around that. I also gave item to Agrias. So she can... She's probably going to pick up Yvonne on the first turn. That's how I see this playing out in my head anyways. Okay, small correction. We're actually going to do this. I realized that I can give the uh, the, the diamond armlet to Ivana, And that's going to help out Chain Lightning. Maybe we can uh, maybe we can pull something off with that. I don't know. It just depends, really. Oh, you didn't think there wasn't going to be a battle here, did you? You would be wrong. And also, I didn't forget about the names. We are going to change those up for the next one. Can't do it yet because, unfortunately, there would be no way to change names before this point. Uh, seeing as now there's a battle right here and all. So what we want to do, we're going to put Ivana right there, Ragnello right there. And let's bring Mass Royal as well. He's still got his throw item set up, so he should be useful here, potentially. Uh, he also has insanely high evasion. <laughs> I think he's at like 50% of aid. I know that there are thieves on this map, so it's kind of irrelevant in that sense because they have concentrate in this. Uh, but there's some marksmen too, and I think they have the potential to miss. And by the way, they start with the high ground. Well, you'll see. This is just, <laughs> this is obnoxious. The range is so absurd. Now this guy. Hmm, how about 500 gil per head? Hmm, way too low, man. 2,000. It's 2,000 gil a head. You know, it'd be easy to make all of you heretics. Yeah. Is that a threat? Hmm, how about a thousand gil? I, I really like this cutscene though, because this guy gets so screwed. <laughs> this guy gets so screwed by Vormap, dude. 700, no more. Okay, done deal. They'll be here any minute. Kill them all, you understand? Ha, huh, speak of the devil. Hey, you leave Valius out of this. There they are. Get them. And they're going to do their best, don't you worry. They're probably, they're probably going to annihilate me. This map is kind of hard. That's Gafgarion. Damn, 700 was too cheap. <laughs> I like how Gafgarion's reputation precedes him. <laughs> Just imagine being that guy, though. Imagine, <laughs> imagine thinking you're about to get the easiest fight of your life, and then all of a sudden comes the badass of all badasses. <laughs> uh, ambush ain't going all out. If you don't like it, you can leave. I don't usually do freebies, but I'll make an exception. I assume he's being like a smartass because of uh, Agrias' response. Okay, sorry about that. Let's get it. Okay, so uh, here's how I see this playing out. Here's how I see this playing out. I think that thief should come forward, attack my G. First things first. Uh, the second one will probably do the same to Agrias and or Mass Royal. It just depends on uh, compatibility, really. Those two marksmen should drop Ivana immediately, but Agrias can pick her right back up. Or, oh, oh my god, best compatibility, oh my god, <laughs> really? <laughs> That's unfortunate. I guess, well, I say that, but we did dodge, at the very least. It is unfortunate, though, because that does, by default, mean the Gafgarion has worse compatibility with that guy. Just simply because of the way that, uh, simply because of the way that the Zodiac signs work out and all that. Uh, so, yeah, they're gonna drop Ivana. I'm not sure how Gafgarion having worse on that guy is gonna play out. Uh, he also missed, so I, I guess it wouldn't matter too much. I guess not. Agriash should pick her right back up, so that was two actions wasted by them, basically. 
And also, I'm kind of confused that they even went for that charm, to be honest, because they could have just killed her. They could have just killed her. So there goes my shield, but I did give her a worse shield. That's not my mythical shield, thankfully. Now, these priests, they have the potential to be real assholes. Let's see if they're going to do it. Yep. <laughs> so that's a holy. But I actually think that she's incredibly dumb because she just ran right into Master Oil's face. So if I can chip her with literally anybody, which I can do with Ivana, which is why she has the Thunder Rod. <laughs> so I can chip her with Ivana, get the damage I need. Hell, actually, I, I think that my G could run up in her face and just, like, kill her. <laughs> Honestly. Because he's, he's strong on both sides. And since she's charging... Oh yeah, she's charging an attack. Maybe, ah, maybe if he had the diamond armor after all. Because it would have been 49 times 1.5 gives us... 70... something. No, he couldn't have done it. He couldn't have done it. Yeah, he would have been at, what, 73, I think? It wouldn't have been enough. Unless compatibility... Compatibility still might make this possible. I... I can never remember these guys. It actually, yeah, he can actually, <laughs> he can clown her with a with a melee attack. So I should do that, I think, because maybe. Well, how much can I do to this thief, first of all? Okay, so here's how I see this: my G and Ragnella can gang up on this guy take him out. She has the flame rod so she should be doing comparable damage. This isn't bad, is it? Uh, Scorpio versus... It's not Leo or Aquarius, hopefully. Oh, please. Please. Pisces. Okay. Yeah, now we're talking. Okay, so they can take him out. But he's the only thief in the game with his portrait. He has a... Yeah, he has a unique sprite. Or, or a unique... Yeah, a unique portrait. I wish they would have kept his uh, hatless sprite, though. That would have been a nice detail. But what we want to do... We can kill you. We, we need to take this guy out because he does have items, so... That's going to make things a lot worse. Mass Royal can now... Smack you for like 60... Oh! Oh! Bad combat. Oh, no, no! She has defense up, doesn't she? Yeah, she has defense up. That's my fault. That's my fault. But Chain Lightning will still be enough regardless. I have no doubt. We can do 42 with that. We can definitely do 42 with that. She's not boosting her magic evade. It wouldn't matter anyways since she is charging, so she is totally defenseless. And uh, <laughs> Gafgarion's about to take this hit for me, but it's going to be worth it. Yep, double kill. Not double kill, but you know what I mean. A kill and then a lot of chip. A lot of chip to the point that Master Royal can kill the other one, assuming no auto potion because she does not have defense up. Yeah, so I can kill that girl too now. And uh, we can just hang out right here with Ragnella, save that CT, and this should be a kill. Yep. So that's probably the best way we can start this. Doesn't actually matter at all if Gavgirian hits by this Berserk. That could almost be better for me in a way. No, because like, although he's not going to be using his sword skills now, he's actually stronger than ever. So, uh, <laughs> you're bad, I guess. There's one. As long as we hit the second 90, we're looking really good. We're looking really good if this can connect. Sick. Sick, sick, sick. So Gavgirian's actually going to murder this guy. Yeah, I have no idea why you allowed him to do that, but... <laughs> Seriously, I've never seen the priest do that. That's probably the worst possible thing they could have done. Any other action at all would have been more beneficial. Now, of course, since they are priests, they do have access to plenty of different healing magics, but... Eh, I think they're kind of screwed at this point. Can they even drop Ragnella? Or, I mean, uh... Yeah, they can drop Ivana again, but Agrios is just going to pick her back up, so... You know... <laughs> And since nobody else can die here... And shoot, we didn't even lose a turn with her. Yeah, this is looking pretty good. Unless this Spirit Surge can kill me, they're not even going to go for it. Huh. Yeah, if that Priest had went for, say, a Spirit Surge, that could have been it, I think. My G can actually kill her instantly with a physical attack, assuming we connect. Uh, Agrias will go before Ivana. Ragnella can kill this one. Now, they will heal, I suppose. Or will they? Will they get a chance? Because uh, Mass Royal might be able to put her down first. Mm, 
no, it doesn't look like it, unfortunately. Well, we can drop this priest again before she gets out of hand. Yeah, we can definitely do that. I think this is the best move by far. Yeah, uh, is there a 100% way? If I went for my only other explosion... Oh, oh, yo, yo, yo! Yo, here we go. No, this is a way better move. We drop her... with you. Yeah, yeah, here we go, here we go. Now we can move in, since we saved that CT on the first turn, the turn orders are gonna work out very nicely. Who did I drop? <laughs> I think I dropped the one charging the spell, right? Let's make sure we don't screw up the easiest possible move. Explosion on my G to you. Okay, that's what I thought. And now we can blow you up as well. Yeah, I wasn't really worried about compatibility or anything since she was so low already. Now, assuming we don't miss, this could not be any better. Could not be any better. Nice! Yeah, I think this one's a wrap, folks. I really do. Yeah, and Agrios is going to do exactly what I wanted her to do because she is the best. God bless you, Agrios. And honestly, I can even start working on these marksmen if I really wanted to, but it may be more intelligent to bring Ivana out of two-shot. Well, not out of two-shot range, but out of instantly dropped again range. Because these guys... Will they? No, I don't believe that they will. I don't think they're going to turn first. So I guess we can start... Uh, we can either move in and get some chip on you. This might be the way. Because that's going to put him in range for... Somebody. I think Scorpio versus what? Scorpio versus Cancer at 64 faith though. And you have uh, Tauros at 47. So we can kill this guy with magic. The other guy's gonna be more of a problem. But this guy should be no issue. He's, he's like not even here basically. Uh, my G can't really do too much to him though unfortunately. So I guess that's something to think about. Uh, that said, we can just smash him now. This should be a good 42 I think. Yep. Of course, oh, that could have been a mistake. I just, yeah, he has CT save. So that's going to bump his CT up by 20 points, but I think that we should still squeeze in an explosion here. Yeah, we can, which should kill. And it does, so there you go. Stay right there, no reason to waste the CT. They're all in range of her anyways, since uh, they uh, may just have really good range. Deceptively good range, in fact. Maps in this game are not very large. Not at all, especially considering how easy it is to bump up your movement and all. So this, uh, this priest is... This is exactly what we want, basically. She's stuck in a revival loop. She can't get out because somebody's always going to be there to kill her. Every single time. She's never going to get a single move. And it also has the benefit of forcing the marksman to waste his time doing that instead of anything useful. Ouch. <laughs> Sorry, Ragna. <laughs> At least that crit was, like, totally irrelevant, right? I was never done. Or I was never living there either way. She shouldn't be able to get this off. Even if she can, that's a huge chunk of her MP gone. Yeah, she can't, because she can't even dodge since he's charging, so I can just have my G do it again if I need to. Uh, Ivana might... No, 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 no. Well, yeah, we'll do it with my G. We'll do it with my G, and we're, we're still gonna wait for the crystals a little bit. Just a little bit. Now, ideally, I might be able to get somebody to block the marksman from repeatedly reviving this girl, because I don't want to have to drop her over and over and over again like this. It's just experience that I don't need to get, basically. Um, do I have reviving on you? I do. Or should I just leave it to Agrios? Oh, Agrios can't do it. Yeah, it's gotta be you. We'll pick you up, who will then pick up... Uh... Ragnella. And then, uh... She can charge a spell on one of the marksmen. Now, this chapter is uh, particularly difficult because you can't do anything if your team can't win. <laughs> like, there's no opportunity to train here after Fort Zeekton, so... I would highly recommend that before you finish that map, you can at least deal with this map. Because that's gonna be, uh... Essentially mandatory. There's no time in between to train up, do any propositions, or anything like that. That might be a dead marksman. And if we can kill that guy, uh, that's basically game, because he's the last revival. Yep, game. They can't win. And since that's 100%, no chance of anything going wrong. Nice. So now I guess we're just going to wait for the Priest Crystals. And Agrios is even going to use my Axe Potion... Girl, please! 
So ideally... <sighs> was it you? I think it was you. I want this crystal, if, if at all possible. Because she went for a holy. And I want that on my G. I want my G to get holy. But I, I don't want to have to pay for it, basically. Yeah, so we'll just cut to see whatever happens with these crystals. Uh, again, there's, I can't possibly lose at this point. Okay, so there's one crystal, a thief crystal. Uh, <clears throat> maybe I should have brought the old professor, huh? Because he could have benefited from that. Uh, my G doesn't have thief either, does he? No, I don't have anybody with Thief unlocked on my team, actually. Ah, unfortunate. The only other thing he had was item, I do believe. This guy has battle skill if he should turn into a crystal, I guess. Yeah, it almost would have been better if they would have had, uh, if they would have turned into a treasure box, because these thieves actually have really good stuff. You can't have a hidden knife by this point. I think you can buy it after this map. Yeah, actually, I think you can buy all of this stuff after this map, so I guess it's not that big of a deal. I mean, she might as well get it, right? Who else is going to really... Okay, so he had some knight stuff at least, so that's cool. Uh, if, have, if I would have known that, I guess Mass Royal would have been the call. Maybe don't let Agrias burn all my Phoenix Downs though, huh? Those are pretty expensive in this, as I recall. Yes, Crystal! Yes! Holy, 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 holy. Damn it! Oh, wait, what am I saying? Hello! <laughs> These are all really good though, too. Ah, she could have dropped holy though. That would have been sick. The other one might, if I'm lucky. Nothing but crystals today. God damn, she has battle skill. Uh, you know, I'd like to get that marksman crystal, actually, because I think he had CT save, right? And that could be very useful. But the problem is, I think that my G is the only one who can even go up here. <laughs> Does he even have four jump? Oh, I, didn't, I don't have anybody with four jump. Oh, no. Oh, god damn it. I can't get up there. <laughs> I have to kill him with magic. Yeah, I gotta revive. And that guy turns into a treasure box, which is great for me because I can't get up there anyways. And she turned into a treasure box. So, okay, let's just, uh, yeah, let's just blow him up, honestly, at this point. Uh, what does Comet do? Where is it? There we go. I guess I should use Comet, right? Because... Or is it the same as Explosion? Yes, yeah, it's the exact same as Explosion, so we just do that. And that times two should be a kill. Especially if we get this oil. Come on now. Ah. And he's now officially dead. Yeah, unless he crits me, I guess. <laughs> yeah, that would be kind of bad. Wouldn't be the end of the world, but it would definitely make things take longer for no reason. Oh, he can do- Oh, oh, god damn it. Stop. Just let me- Just let me win. <laughs> I didn't realize that was an option. God, the AI is so smart. <laughs> Frustratingly so. That was literally the only thing he could have possibly done to survive. But if, yeah, if Yvonne is back, or if, if Ragnell even is back, then we can just double kill him. We can just double explosion, basically. I can't believe he just did that. <laughs> So yeah, you can see the problem with this map is that the enemy has the high ground right off the bat. Those marksmen have just utterly ridiculous range. I don't know if I... I'm pretty sure I did specifically mention that, but if not, it bears repeating. There's really no safe zones here. Not really. So you need a good way to deal with that. Absolutely. No, uh, no question in my mind. But not such a bad map as long as you can deal with the fact that you're going to be getting bum-rushed immediately. And that's kind of the big thing, so that's why I wanted my G to be a squire, so he would have the HP necessary to survive. Uh, there's no time to waste. We must hurry and rescue the princess. Where are we going? Do you know where they went? No, not really. <laughs> there's only one place they could have escaped to. Impregnable fortress. Bethla Garrison. Oh boy, Bethla Garrison in Act 2. Could you even imagine? Bethla Garrison. I swear to God, Kaga designed... <laughs> I think he did. I think he designed Bethlehem Garrison because it, it's kind of bullshit, actually. Congratulations. This battle is complete. Six, uh, 6,000 gil, another thousand, an Arbalest, eh? Mage Masher, and Phoenix Down. I actually, weirdly enough, I think those thieves have potential to spawn with Mage Mashers. And, uh, I, I, have we seen a Mage Masher? I don't think we have. But they, they hit your MP. They attack your MP, not your HP. So I guess that could have been kind of interesting had one of them spawned with it and hit my G. 
But I don't think that the the quote unquote boss, right? The uh, the thief with the unique portrait. I don't think he can have a major master, but I believe that the other guy can. Uh, that said, we are actually going to just leave it with one map today because I have a lot of crap to do <laughs> before moving on. Uh, most notably, now that we're in Act 2, we can do propositions. Now, these are very important, I would say, for 1.3 because they allow you to gain lots of JP and money very quickly without gaining any experience. Uh, we can only send generic units on these. In fact, I could kind of show you an example, I suppose. Uh, so we would accept the proposition like so. In this case, it's... A bandit, a bandits apparently. Bandits are appearing on the trade route between Dorder and Golan. They only attack our Shogobo cart. Uh, yeah, this is by the way, <laughs> again, the bar section is where the game gets insanely English-y. <laughs> Please get rid of the bandits to prevent our losses. I thought I said to prevent our losers. Uh, Vega Slicker. So you would do that and then you select up to three units. Now, I don't think anybody actually knows how propositions work. Like 25 years later and I'm still pretty sure it's not an exact science but basically uh, depending on the mission at hand you might want to send different classes for example if you are doing something that might require uh, diplomacy you might want to send a mediator so it does actually make sense to sort of read the description to get a general idea of what you're doing uh, but it's not it's not as specific as say Dead Dink's Advance where you were pretty clearly intended to send specific classes on specific missions. In this game, you can complete a proposition with almost any uh, almost any class, I want to say. The only difference that it would make is that if you happen to complete one very well, as in, uh, well, well, you'll see when they come back, they'll give like a little report. But if you happen to do very well, uh, then you get more JP, more rewards, etc., etc. So I'm going to basically do all of these. And uh, try to maximize JP and crap like that. There's, they're basically at every major city at this point. So, Egros, Garland, and uh, Dorder. What I recommend you do, uh, since it's it's day based essentially. So, one proposition might take ten days, for example, and one day will pass every time you move a tile. So, what I like to do is go to a place where there are two blue tiles adjacent to each other like this, and then just walk back and forth. So that way, you don't have to risk random encounters or anything like that. Uh, basically, that's what I'm going to be doing until the next one. Then we can get our new names, find out our new crew and all that. Uh, so, that's it. That's going to do it for me. Thank you for watching. I hope that you enjoyed, and I will catch you guys on the next one. See you then. Peace. Chapter 2, Bethlehem Garrison.